All right, what's up guys? It's Apollo here. Hope you guys are doing well and welcome back to another epic siege battle in Total War Rome 2. Today we've got a battle of elite armies. We're going to have quite the defense here today because the attacking force is quite stacked in terms of faction selection here. They've picked some of the best factions for attacking, and it's going to be quite the challenge for the defenders, so it's going to be a lot of fun to see how this plays out. So, looking at the attackers really fast, we have the Seleucids with Rome, and then we have the Seleucids with Rome. No, <laughs> just kidding. But yeah, there's another Seleucid and Roman army. So, yeah, these guys are really really tough to take on in a uh, siege so it's gonna be pretty challenging so looking at the defenders really fast uh, they also have some good factions some of these factions kind of more known for their uh, aggression rather than defense you know they're more of like an offensive faction like the bowie eye so the bowie eye they're really good they got great units but they're really more known for being attackers and then you, you have kush of course which is another good faction. Kush is going to do great here, actually, now that I think about it. Because Kush is going on against, or going against two heavily, like, armored factions. Rome and Seleucid. So they're going to do just fine with these Shotel warriors. They just got to make sure they throw them in at the right time. And they don't lose them to, like, archers or anything. And then we have Swaby. Again, Swaby, a very good attacking faction. They can do their, you know, of course they can do pretty well defending as well if you use them right and then you have Macedon which is another solid defensive faction look at this this is cool but the little temple in the back there minus the Bowie eye flag that makes no sense but I mean I guess it's, yeah, I know why it's the Bowie eye flag but yeah so and then the capture point uh, is not I know it looks like it would be in here because it's like an inner defense thing but the victory point if I'm not mistaken is right here so they've got to defend the center area of the siege. So right away, we do have this Roman army going in with three tortoises. And they are not putting up any kind of defense. Which is a real shame. This is a real shame right here. Because this, is, this would be really easy to defend. All you got to do is put one unit here, one unit here. Then have archers. Game over for Rome. Now, of course, they are sending up tortoises so completely throw that strategy out the window these are not siege towers i'm an idiot they're gonna bring down the walls but still they you can contain the romans pretty easily over here and i think that's why we're seeing bowie i rush over to this section of the wall <laughs> And uh, they're going to try to defend it as quickly as possible. Uh, the Seleucids are pushing up their siege towers. Rome is also pushing on this. Uh, the other Roman army pushing up on this side. And now we have Swaby's archers over here. The longbow hunters trying to, uh, I assume, do some damage to the siege towers. Honestly, I don't even think it's worth it. You might as well just hold fire and not even worry about it. And then we have... Uh, more Roman uh, siege showers making it over this way. So uh, this defense is, seems a little scattered to me. It's it, There's a lot going on in terms of like where they're all placed and everything. And um, yeah, Rome, is, Rome might be able to take advantage of that. Now I see why they're defending back here. Because I think that's the only way in. Yeah. But you give up the walls so they could easily set up archers over here and fire down. So anyways, let's go back over here where the battle is beginning. And we have some siege towers that are about to release the men onto the walls. Of course, the archers are like, yo, geez, I'm getting the hell out of here. I'm not going to face this Roman infantry alone. And that's a smart move. Obviously, you don't want to lose your archers early on. And we've got the veteran legionaries about to charge across the little drawbridge here. There they go. And they're going to take these walls, and the defenders are going to let them let them have it. They do. Macedon does have a unit over here in the center. I think they have them over here because they don't want anyone to take the gate. So they're keeping a unit on that center to make it harder for the attackers to take it. They got a lot of deployables over here, which is going to make this challenge. You get this lone Macedonian soldier just like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I'm standing up here. I don't care. I think he's stuck in the traps here, but... You know, it happens. Uh, let's go back over here where I think Rome... Let's see, hold on. Rome is bringing down the walls. And they're also attacking this gate over here. 
Uh, the siege towers are not quite in position. I think they're waiting a little bit. But it is working because these sword followers are wasting their ammo on the siege tower. I think that's why he's telling them to move. He's like, hey, knock it off. Like, stop. You're wasting your ammo. Oh, my God. The Romans are littered with jabbies. Yeah, just sit there. Absorb that ammo. And the slingers. Oh, my God. We have slingers supporting that. Let's see. Where are they? That's not them. Slingers are back here just slinging. Now, this is why I love the slingers because they're a really good defensive unit. They could do a lot of blunt damage to the attackers and... Yeah, that's what happened. They're all dead. Or no, he's leaving. He's leaving. Okay. So Rome has knocked down these sections of the uh, the wall. And Bowie is going to be more than happy to meet them in the, uh, the, the breach. So they're going to stand their ground with these sword followers. They're going to be taking on some uh, cohort here. And there they go. There goes the charge. The big charge. Into the breach. Beautiful. Very cool. Uh, that actually looks really cool how they're kind of trickling into the fight. It kind of like simulates the, the rubble in the way. But Rome's definitely going to have to send up more reinforcements to break through this because they just don't have enough here. And you can see they're already breaking. Look at that. Oh. They stand no chance against the healthy followers who have not been getting shot at from arrows, unlike the Romans. Let's go back over here and see how Rome's doing. We got another breach in the wall. You can see there's a pretty large battle and there's a lot to cover. But Rome is going full speed ahead. We got some Praetorian Guard pushing in the center, trying to take control of this gate. And they're charging through the gate. Did they neutralize it? They did neutralize it. So they're not going to have to worry about oil. And yeah, he's going to charge right into this gate and take on these Thorax Swords. So Rome is attacking on all cylinders right now, just everywhere they can go, which is fantastic to see. Now we have Swaby, who is trying to hold the line. And you know what I'm kind of surprised about is that we haven't seen Kush engage any of the attackers. It seems like Kush is being more of a last resort army instead of being in the front line. Which is really surprising because, you know, Kush being excellent against heavy army. I mean, you know, obviously them waiting to attack is not going to take away that AP damage. I just thought, you know, in my head, I, I would have sent Kush first to do a lot of damage. But I guess, I mean, you can save them towards the end of the battle as well. And they'll just, you know, they'll be just as effective. Maybe even better because you weaken the attackers a little bit. But we got this, like, ruthless, ruthless fight over here, which is just fantastic. Oh. Yeah, it's got to feel good killing a Roman as a barbarian, I can imagine. So, a nice fight going on there. Rome has uh, archers moved up. See, these Syrian archers? Yes. They have the Auxiliary Syrian Archers opening fire on Bowiei. This is going to be a great little tactic here, trying to soften up the, the uh, Barbarian Infantry. But they do have to be careful of the Celtic Slingers. I'm pretty sure the Syrian Archers should, should beat the Slingers. Especially with these big tortoises. I don't know if the tortoises absorb ammo or they just go through it. Um, but it's kind of giving them some cover. And the arrows should be a little bit more accurate. They can fire over them. So we'll see how that plays out. Now we got some armored legionaries moving up to the fight. Bowie Eye's trying to hold on the best he can. He's got reinforcements on the flank there. So a nice juicy battle. We also have a battle on the walls here. And look at this. The Seleucids are now here ready to boogie. They're taking out uh, some of the uh, Bowie Eye defenders. And they've completely taken this wall. And Bowie Eye's doing the best he can, trying to hold these key points where the, the stairways are. But they're just so heavily outnumbered. I don't think they're going to hold much longer. And now here comes Kush. They've got the Shotel Warriors about to charge in. Oh, they get a... Oh, my God. You see how many drop there. They get a nice little volley, and they're going to charge right into these in, into the backs of these Thorax Swordsmen. And this is where these Shotel Warriors are about to wreck lives. Watch this. You can see the kills right here. Seven. They're already at 17. 18. Actually, 
kind of surprised. They're stuck at 18. But they will rack up a lot of kills with those heavily armored units. And we have more show. Look how cool this map is. I love this map. It's I don't think I've ever seen this map. But I think these guys are also going to do the same thing. Flank around and use the AP ability. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's going to sting. Let's see if they go in for a charge. They're going to use a little bit of their skirmishing capabilities. And back over here, there's a lot of breaking going on. As you can see, Rome is like really trying to push. I think they're pushing a little too hard here. And it's getting their men to, to die a little too quickly. Uh, the battle for the gate is still underway. Uh, we have some Romans up here who are just kind of standing here getting shot. So you might want to get those. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm an idiot. Uh, they're fighting. I didn't see this flag. They're fighting Macedon. So that's why they're getting shot. Poor Rome. And then over here, Rome is cornered. And, uh, yeah. Rome is just uh, kind of throwing their troops into the mix. I'm surprised they didn't send archers up here. I mean, I get it because Macedon could easily send troops and run them down. But, you know, you, if you send a unit to defend the archers up here and just fire down, they'd be racking up kills right now. And same thing, Seleucids are getting crushed. I mean, it just seems like the attackers just ran into this trap and they find themselves surrounded. Sheltel Warriors already at 43. Remember these guys? They were at 18. Well, now they're at 43. 44. So yeah, yeah, they're they're already racking up kills. Rome over here. This is this is the most promising assault right here for the Seleucids in Rome. This corner they've taken, and they're actually going to be able as soon as they kill this Boei unit, going to be able to send up reinforcements and help this battle uh, in this big breach. This battle. But what a what a front line we've got here, guys. I mean, the classic barbarian versus Roman forces. Quite the show. Oh my god, look how cool that is. The sunlight. That's awesome. This is a great shot right here. The barbarians trying to hold... They're holding on these flanks, but the Roman, the Roman forces just slowly growing, like the tide coming in on the on the shore there on the beaches, just slowly moving forward, and Bowie is starting to break here against this Roman wave. Uh, now the archers have actually been. Let's see, we got some slingers that are wavering. I think maybe that's from the uh, the uh, Celtic slingers. But the Seleucids desperately need to try to break through here. The, soon, the sooner they can, the better. Like they, As soon as they do, they're going to probably crush this defending force and they're going to have to fall back. Um, over here, we've got another force of Kush. Let's see, Kush Shotel warriors coming in to support because Macedon, their Thorax swordsmen, can't hold for any longer. But this isn't good. You're surrounded by Shotel warriors, all right? They're, they're going to get slaughtered. Look at they're at 81 kills now. 81 kills. And then these guys are at 101. Wow. Back over this way. No, oh, now we have the Seleucids pouring in troops. And this little pitch, or not pitch battle, but this little gate area battle has been quite bloody. And now we have the Swaby who are victorious on this corner. And you know, I wouldn't give up on this corner. I'd send some archers or some infantry um, or both to kind of keep the defenders occupied over here. You don't want to concentrate too much in one area. I think that's just going to make it too easy for the defenders. Here comes the Seleucid sending in reinforcements. I actually have... The Thorax Swordsmen a little bit surrounded there. The Shotel Warriors trying to come in and help. 124 kills. Thorax Swordsmen coming in. This is a fresh unit only with 11 kills. 11 kills and they have 
Let's see, 157 men. That's a positive kill D right there for now. And uh, Seleucids are also fighting Bowie Eye up here, but it's only a matter of time until Bowie Eye lose these walls. Let's go back over to this point of the battle where, very wisely, the defenders have reinforced this side of the battle. So, um, yeah, we've got Shotel, armored Shotel warriors now, which is like one step better than just the, the normal Shotel warriors. So they have sent up reinforcements. Like I said, uh, Kush is being the um, support army in this battle. So they're doing their best to hold. Um, they've, I think they also sent over some sword followers to reinforce this. And by the Seleucids desperately trying to push in here, they're going to cause their men to bleed against these Shotel warriors. <laughs> hey guys, take a shot every time I say Shotel warriors. <laughs> You'd be dead. Just like these heavily armored men. So this fight's getting crazy, and because of recent reinforcements, they are holding this position. In fact, they've gotten themselves, they're able to push on this flank, and they're now surrounding the Roman infantry. And Rome's pretty much spent over here. They're running out of troops. Uh, the Seleucids still look very healthy. And this fight over in this really tight, like, area of the wall, and you got the street here, and then you have the... Uh, the structure, the the uh, aqueduct, the aqueduct. I'm drawing. I'm having a brain fart here, but yeah, the 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 thing that gives them water. <laughs> Swaby now sending in some spears. Aqueduct, aqueduct. Anyways, you know, I'm an idiot, so bear with me. So the Seleucids, uh, they've got their thorax swords in here. They're trying to hold. Um, they're trying to clean up what's left of Rome. Is that some Roman? Oh yeah, we've got some Roman cab in the mix as well. So the attackers really just throwing in everything they have to try to take control of this area. But they still have a lot of troops, and this gate battle is going to be really interesting uh, because I'm really surprised. Like I usually never see this in a siege battle where the attackers commit so much to a gate because the gates are like one of the hardest areas to attack. And a siege, rightfully so. Like, if you're going to put an opening in your wall, you're going to defend it heavily. Because that could be, you know, used by the enemy. Oh, that's pretty cool. The arrow's coming down. Watching these, uh, watching the Cav fight in the front line. I mean, it's the general. He probably shouldn't have them up there like that. Oh, God, that guy. Oh, my God. Look at this guy. Hold on. He had his eyes completely just hit <laughs> with spears. Oh my god, a tragic sight. Get it? Sight? Because he has no sight now? Oof. Alright, uh, so the Seleucids have taken this top of the, uh, the gate. And if they can push the defenders back a little bit, they can start capturing this gate. And they can activate the arrow towers, which are going to be a big help in this, this assault. But I really hope they retreat this uh, Roman general because you don't want to lose a general so early on. It's quite nasty. Thorax swords mixed with the Romans. They're pushing in. Look at this. Bowie Eyes completely cleaned up this entire fight. Look at the bloodshed over here. The carpet of dead. Thanks to the uh, Bowie Eye allies coming in to support. And it's caused a lot of issues for the attackers. And the Seleucids over here, they're, they're in a bit of a tricky situation. Because they just couldn't get there in time. And imagine if they were. This would have been a completely different outcome. Now the Seleucids relying on archers, which is good to see. Good to see the archers come into come come into action here. The Syrian heavy archers just shooting some shots. 
doing some damage. More Cav coming in. The Romans coming around to try to hit the flank. This is actually a pretty good move here. And honestly, this is kind of like what the Romans only have in this flank. They only have Cav left over. And maybe with this little, like, second wind here, this little rush, last little push here, they might be able to break through Bowie Eye. Good God, what an actual, just a struggle for this area. I think we have the general, the Oath Sworn general. Yep. General's right here in the fight. And look at this. The Roman Cav running around the streets, slaughtering these slingers, trying to get them off the battlefield. And they're just riding around trying to get some kills. Look at that. Another. Oh my god. Another hammer and anvil. Good use of the Cav by the Roman player. Nice aggressive play there. I love it. And okay, sure enough. Look at this. The Seleucid starting to push. And you know what? Let's do some slow motion really quick. You can see that the defenders, I mean, they've got a couple reserves back here, but they're pretty much committing everything to these walls. So it's it's going to be a battle for the walls, and whoever takes the walls is going to win. So if the defenders can defend them, if the attackers get through, it's they're going to win. So it's it's a battle for these walls, and it's it's pretty freaking epic. How did how did this even happen? Let's see, they've got like two battles going on in the street. Um, they're taking on this general, which this is not good. This is a heavy melee general, or cav. Thorax swords were winning slightly, so this is good for the Seleucids. If they kill the Kushite general, it's going to be trouble for them. Uh, but the Thorax swordsmen, um, they're probably going to finish off these armored Shotel warriors. Which have 185 kills. Oh, look at this battle going on. Oh, this guy's getting peppered by... By, uh, Javis. Let's see, this is pretty epic. Oh, this is so cool. They're, like, in between the two pockets fighting. This guy, this poor guy keeps getting hit by Javis, but thankfully they disappear. Oh! Looks like he lands a hit there. The cab's like, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. <laughs> because the general fell back but uh hey they broke through the kushite's not able to hold the uh the street here and you know what we actually have a mass retreat okay so they're not giving it all to these walls they are going to fall back and defend the inner area that's my bad um i thought they were um but that's okay and look at this they actually they're gonna break through over here as well and you know this has been a solid defense from the defenders so far I think they've done an excellent job, and they've made the attackers bleed a lot of numbers. Oh, here comes, oh boy. Silver Shield Pikeman, one of the best pikes in the game. They're pushing their way through this gate. That's when you know the Seleucids have had enough. That's when you know that they're not messing around anymore. And there we go, big opening right here. They might be able to use this to get around these defenders over here. We got Swaby, Kush. Uh, trying to hold this little flank. But it is a slaughter over here. An absolute slaughter. Alright, so the Seleucids have taken this wall. The defenders are falling back. Um, this is their last stand. They've got a lot of archers. Not a ton of infantry. Uh, now, there is some slave, the Kushite slave infantry, which is not the greatest unit, but for their price, they're pretty good. So they've got some of them, but I don't know, I kind of worry for the defenders because there's still a lot of really good attacking units. But, you know, looking at the balance of power, it's still pretty even, though. So it's still anyone's game. And also, let's not forget, Mastodon has some shield bearers. This is going to be a great defensive unit. You know, having all those archers, here's some more Shotel Warriors. Uh, having all those archers is great when you have a defensive unit to just hold the enemy in place and let the archers just pepper them down. So I think that's what we're going to see. And you can see the little defense here, which I'm kind of surprised that they're so far out defending this area. Like, I would assume you just defend here, here, and maybe here. I guess you would have to defend over here, too. 
But yeah, you just hold these little choke points. And the cool thing is you got these buildings right here. You can put archers in these buildings. Which uh, I'm surprised they haven't. They definitely should. This is a really cool map. I like this map a lot. I love the fact that you got two archer buildings. Or, or unit buildings you can put the troops in. I really wish there was more buildings like this in, in Total War. Where you could have, you know, these buildings where you can put troops in them. Alright, so we got a little bit of the fight starting up here. Rome pushing in with some first cohort. Very fitting name because they're the first ones to go into the secondary defense. They finally have cleaned up the, uh, the, fe the defenders over here. <clears throat> and it is official. The defenders have officially have lost. Ooh. Ooh. Lost the wall. <clears throat> and I'm starting to lose my voice. So we're all losing something. Rome is uh, pretty much out over on this side. I mean, they've got a couple troops. I mean, everything matters, but yeah, they're pretty, they've been pretty declawed over here. I mean, all there really is is a small Seleucid force. The most promising force is right here. Lots of Seleucids. Again, Rome just kind of threw away their armies, both sides here. This attack, for, I mean, there was two major parts of this siege, right? You had the big gate battle, and then you had the uh, the big breach battle over here. Both were bloody, both were nasty, and I think overall the defenders came out on top on them. Yes, they lost and had to retreat, but they made the attackers suffer. Alright, there we go. Yeah, sure enough, they have fallen back a little bit. Why haven't they put the archers up here? Oh, uh, what is this? <laughs> we have some Thorax swordsmen in a siege tower behind the settlement. Oh, there was a little fight over here. Ah, dang it. I'm sorry, guys. I didn't expect that. <laughs> well, it wasn't much. It was probably like one unit versus another. Uh, and it looks like the defenders probably won that one. But, you know, with that one unit over here, you could easily take this wall and capture this. This is like, um, it's not the victory point, but it can provide you, allow units to move quicker. So it's a little little bonus there, a little boost. So taking that would be helpful. You will get shot to pieces by these towers. That's alright, it's worth it, being, being able to move quicker. So I think the uh, attackers are using some skirmishing here. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward a little bit. Until uh, they start pushing into the inner defenses. And I think they've just given the order right here to push in. I think that, well, no, they're going to hold their position. We do have a large mass uh, of troops pushing around the uh, the flank. And there we go. There's that archer fire coming in from the defenders. Um, you can see that the defenders are going to focus this side, obviously, because... This is such a weak front. They don't have a ton defending this area. They don't really need a lot of troops to defend that area. And Kush is starting to uh, line out his troops over here to uh, to kind of hold this huge Seleucid force. Look at this huge force pushing down this street. And we got these Syrian archers moving to position. Look at that. Getting right in front of the enemy. Oh, he's going to charge him in. What is he doing? Getting a little too close. Oh, dude, you just took an arrow. But he's like, I don't care. I'm not phased at all. He's like on drugs. He just doesn't even care for his own well-being. He's just going to keep shooting his arrows. <laughs> so nobody's commit to the fight yet. We're going to go and fast forward again. All the defenders can really do here is just sit and wait for the attackers to make their move. Of course, they can try to skirmish the enemy down a little bit. We do have some troops headed to this capture point, And here comes the uh, siege tower. Ready to drop off the forces. Again, this isn't going to give them the victory. I don't think it's worth committing this many troops and taking it. But you know what? You know what he could do over here? Is put some archers on these walls. That would be huge help. Uh, this structure would get in the way a little bit. But you could take the arrow towers. You could put archers up there. It'd be pretty nice. His Roman archers are getting chased by the, Sh the Kushite slave infantry. <laughs> We 
We got some old sword defending the rear. I don't know why they don't put archers up here, though. Maybe they just don't know or they're worried. Because it is easy to destroy this building, but I don't see any artillery. We got infantry back here. What is infantry doing back here? Got the general back there. Yeah, I don't see any artillery, so I don't think it's a big deal. And yeah, sure enough, they're going to capture the arrow towers. Uh, this infantry is still making their way off the siege tower. Most likely going to capture the center point. <laughs> we got some uh, fiery balls of justice over here for some reason. And still, the, uh, the attackers have not made a move yet. I think they're just trying to set up their assault here. Taking control of this back area. And that might help them out. Might help them out a lot. So let's fast forward again. Oh! Let's see. I think the archers are just opening fire right now. As the uh, defenders are shifting around troops as well. Uh, yeah, lots of archer fire coming down. I'm curious though. Are the siege towers shooting? Yes, they are. They're shooting at the defenders. So this was a good move. This was a great move by the, uh, the attackers. I mean... That's what you got to do in these types of battles, um, is take every advantage you can get. You've got to try to win and, and I mean, obviously you're trying to win, but what I'm trying to say is you got to crawl, claw and fight for everything and taking these arrow towers. Sure. You don't think it's a lot, but they are shooting and they are inflicting casualties, whether it's just one or two guys, maybe that's the, the difference. Now we got pikes moving up. These pikes are going to be a real problem. Thorax, uh, Thorax pikemen, they're definitely going to need to focus them down with archer fire. And I think that's what they're doing. Using fire arrows. They just use standard shot. These archers are just standing here right in front of these pikes. I hope they're out of ammo. I don't think they are because they are retreating. And here we go. I think finally we have infantry uh, making their way, walking fast. Uh, no, they're going in to uh, attack this, this defense. We have the general charging in. Look at this madman. Dude, this guy's crazy. Is this the same general that was... I think the general's dead. I really need to turn on my notifications. But, yeah, I think he um, lost the general. So he's just recklessly using the bodyguard to try to get some uh, charges on the uh, enemy archers. Oh, what's happening here? Why are they charging out? Why are the defenders charging out against these attackers? What a bunch of girls. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, a little bit of a charge. That might have been just like a misclick there. But here's a huge infantry fight. Again, these pikes are going to be a big issue. They're supported with normal infantry, like sorted infantry. The Seleucids still have so many troops left. These Thorak Pikes are starting to run out of men, though. They're, I mean, they're at 84. They are taking skirmishing fire. This is good. Try to take them out. I mean, the big problem here is the... Uh, so where are they? Oh, more Thorak Pikemen. I swear I saw Silver Shield Pikemen. I did. They're over here. Which they need to start pushing up as well. You might as well attack on all fronts. And here we go. Seleucids are moving in on this side. Remember, this is a pretty weak area over here. Because, uh, you know, they're not afraid. But, oh, here comes some pikemen from Macedon to reinforce it. I'm actually kind of surprised they sent the pikes over on this side. You would think they would send the pikes over on the side where the, uh, the enemy is using the pikes. To kind of counter them. But, yeah, that's definitely going to do some damage to the Seleucid force. And Macedon... They've got their uh, hoplites here, shield bearers. They could easily flank around if they fully commit. Could easily flank around. I don't think they're going to do that, though. Ma oh my god, Macedon, you sneaky, sneaky boy. Look at this. He's got some cav outside. <laughs> he must have went through the gate. And he's now going to hit... Oh, they see it. They see it. But still, it's still going to do a lot of damage. I was hoping they wouldn't see it. See if they commit. They're getting hit from these this arrow tower. Yeah, they're not going to commit. I think they're going to ride away. Oh, let's see. He might go through this gap over here. Or he might charge in. Who knows? Companion cav, a nasty cav. Oh, boy. That's going to sting. Ugh. 
Nice job from the uh, Seleucids kind of holding their ground. Uh, they're also pushing over on this way, so we got a full-on attack here. Finally, the Silver uh, Shield pikemen moving in. Let's see if anything's going on, on the backside, where we have some infantry. No. <laughs> Got the, the, they're going to use the enemy's uh, <laughs> deployables. Okay, here we go. This is what I was talking about. Getting archers up here. Really, really nice done here by the Syrian archers. That's awesome. Gorak Swordsman holding. I mean, this is just like a blob of death. But you got to give credit to these shield bearers that are doing an excellent job of just holding them back for as long as possible. To be fair, though, the pikes aren't really in range. They're kind of just sitting in the back doing nothing. Does it say they're in melee? Let's see. In melee. Oh, no. So good, they're, they're just resting them, I guess, in the back. But yeah, good defense here. Uh-oh. We got a general v. general battle. Bowie Eye taking on the Seleucid general. This is really big. You can take, you know, cut off the serpent's head. Killing the general of the Seleucids might hurt the morale of the army. And this might be the defender's only, uh, only chance of winning this battle. Did the archers open fire? Yes, they have. I'm curious, can the arrows go through the stone? Come on, guys. Why are you holding your shots? <laughs> I just want to see one volley, so... God dang it. Well, they're not really firing, so... Here comes more infantry. This is such a cool siege. This is a really awesome settlement. I wish there was more unique settlements like this in Rome. Uh-oh, Mastodon has made it to the back lines. This is exactly what the defenders needed to try to turn this battle around. They need to hurry up though, they're about to get charged by the, ah, oh, the Seleucid general, but half of the regiment, or regiment, geez, half of the unit charges into the rear of the Seleucids. And the Seleucids are now going in for the kill. They, oh, they're breaking this Thorax Swords unit. But the, maybe they're feeling like, you know what, we can kill the Macedonian general. Got some shield bearers with them. And they've committed a lot of infantry over here as well. This is going to be a pretty huge battle right here. Because it's pretty even. With the Kush coming in. With the shield bearers. The two generals. And he's he's pulling away. The Seleucids are pulling away. That's, the, that's not good. You might want to leave it into that fight. Because the infantry over here is breaking. And if they break... Yeah, the, the defenders are going to win this right here. They completely cut off this part of the attacking army. And uh, all they have to do is hold on this side until these guys clear the, this area and they can reinforce it. Balance of power shifted a little bit more in favor of the defenders than it once was. Because it was actually in favor of the attackers by quite a bit. Now they're going for a cap. Look at this. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the defender. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Uh, so yeah, I'm definitely an idiot. That's one thing to know. Uh, so we've got this charge here of, of companion cap. Nice little charge in the flank of the thorax swords. And guys, I think this is like a huge turnaround. Nice little swinging door tactic by the defenders. And it's completely cut these, uh, these Seleucids off from any kind of reinforcements. And they've got themselves surrounded. Look at Kush pushing. Bowie Eye pushing. They are doing a ton of damage to this uh, shield bear shield bearers. How many kills do these guys have? 308. Whoo wee! They are just slicing through this armor. Fighting with their unexpected barbarian allies. <laughs> And they are winning over on this side. Kush is doing wonders here. Macedon with the great plays of the flanking cav and infantry. And my god, they got themselves a, a comeback here. Yeah, the attackers just... Um, 
I don't know. I, I, they just couldn't protect the flank over on that other side. Swaby with the sword masters attacking the rear of these shield bearers. And yeah, this is a losing battle. This uh, this uh, shield bearer general is going to die very soon. And the Thorax swordsmen are going to die. Bowie Eye mixed in with armored Shotel warriors. That's, that's over. That's GG. Just a matter of time. And uh, yeah, we're starting. We're starting to see the Seleucids break in every uh, every way. There's only a minute left in this replay, and there you have it, guys. The defenders are gonna take this one. They're gonna take this one. All they gotta do is clean up this area of the Seleucids, and it's done. Amazing comeback. Really nice plays of, you know, having this street down here was very helpful because they were able to maneuver troops around where the Seleucids were pushing and just cause a lot of death and destruction for the Seleucids. And uh, if I was the Seleucids, maybe you should have just sacrificed one unit to hold here. Maybe they did. They just didn't have enough. Because uh, there was a little bit of a fight. I know they sent in some archers, which you could, or hillmen, which you could see dead. <laughs> oh, they got a horse over here. He's like, I'm out. I'm done. I'm done. Uh, but yeah, the Seleucids are on their last leg, and that's going to be the victory. I, you know, I think the attack was a little sloppy there at the beginning, where they there, there were opportunities to set up archers on walls. I think they just forced it too much, you know? They, like, they just were a little too reckless with their army. They needed to set up some skirmishers, set up some archers, make sure you're not getting outflanked and not pushing into traps and... Yeah, I mean, the casualties were insane in this one, and the amount of power, the powerhouse factions they had, you know, so two Seleucids army, armies and two Roman armies, and they just couldn't get it done. And now, of course, of course, Cush, honestly, um, Cush, yeah, 3,000 kills. They are honestly the reason why the defenders won, because of how heavily armored these armies are, Cush just cuts through them like butter. I mean, look at these kills. Uh, 422 kills. That's insane kills. Uh, and then everyone got over 100, uh, 200 here. Even the slave infantry. Wow, they did great. 30, 79, 150, 130. Uh, the armored Shotel Warriors, 383. The archers, the Kushite archers, so good. So Kush is really good. They did a good job there uh, defending against these guys. Um, for the best, the best faction on the attacking side in terms of kills, Doom with 2,500 kills, which is <clears throat> pretty good. Um, but, you know, 1,600 just, I think Rome kind of struggled there a little bit. I think he brought too much cav. I think if he replaced the cav with more infantry, I think if he used the archers a little bit better, um, you know, take his time. I also, I think if the the uh, the attackers were a little bit closer together, that would have helped out a ton. Uh, but a great battle. I really enjoyed that one. It was a, really fun to see that little Macedon maneuver. That was a really cool play by Macedon and supported with uh, Kush there. But that's going to wrap it up here, guys, for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It was a lot of fun, and I'll see you guys next time on the battlefield.